Welcome back, everybody! Well, this could be a long talky episode, so let's get going. What do you have to say about the Isle of Wonders? If there is a place that this shop belongs to, it is there. Then again, I have never been able to keep an item coming from that island, as they always have a mind of their own. My son has told me he never ceases to be amazed when traveling on that island. Indeed, you shall see it with your own eyes and will not believe it. That is, if your journey takes you there. I still can't believe how it's ruled by chess pieces. Yes, but you don't dare call the queens that. They have a short temper. Also, I wouldn't recommend trying to bring them a present. Not even if you have two identical pieces. They will find a difference and fight as they always do. You want to keep away from that. I'm glad my queen doesn't pay attention to that kind of materialistic trivialities. Why don't you tell me how you two met? Love stories are one of my favorite kinds. King's Quest II, I'd Romancing the Throne. For a few years, but I was lonely. My advisors would have these festivals where princesses from everywhere would come to meet me, hoping I would be interested in one of them. I never was, however, even though they generally seemed very nice. Ah, oh, the picky kind, aren't we? One lonely night, the mirror showed me an image of this beautiful woman. Ah, oh, the same way King Alexander found Cassima. Yes, but what intrigued me most was what I saw within her eyes. I knew I had to search for her. I traveled through the lands of Kalima and into this strange magical world beyond it until I found that tower where my Valenis was imprisoned. Who imprisoned her? A wicked witch by the name of Hagatha. They say she was jealous of Valenis's beauty. It was all too strange to me as when I finally found Valenis, she never recalled having met her. In fact, she cannot recall much of her life before coming to that tower. What happened to her? The witch, I mean. I don't know. We never heard from her again. Ah, but you found the love of your life. Yes, and I'm very happy for it. Yeah, that was uh, King's Quest II, Romancing the Throne. Why do you call it the Isle of the Beast? Has it Alexander ever told you? The prince that lives there now used to be a vicious beast. Is he dangerous? Not anymore. As a matter of fact, he never was. But you know how people can react to appearances. Some of the folks in this town believe I am not someone to trust because of the wares I sell. Some believe they are too strange, if you know what I mean. That's absurd. But that's how this world works. People often judge by what they see on the surface and fear that which they do not understand. How has the beast changed into a prince? He was actually under a spell and was finally returned to his original form by the power of true love. Oh, I remember now. Alexander did tell me this story. I apologize. My memory is not quite what it used to be. No need to. You know the rest of the story then. The prince is now a great merchant, and I'm happy to do business with him. It was a trade. What a wonder of the new world. Which reminds me, I now owe you a story. King's Quest. Aren't we all obviously. great merchants? This is not the first time my family has been in danger. The King's Quest V. Absence makes the heart grow couple of years yonder. Ago, just not long after Alexander had returned home, an evil wizard by the name of Mordak captured not only my family, but my whole castle. My goodness, he must have been quite powerful to take an entire castle. Imagine my shock when, coming home one day from my daily walk through the forests of Daventry, my castle was nowhere to be found. How did you find this evil wizard? and your family and home. I was lucky enough to make some friends who knew where he was. This and that damn Cedric owl. Cedric by name, a <sighs> talker, took me to the land of Serenia, where I later confronted the blackguard in a magic duel. Ah, that's where the wands come from. Wasn't he the same one that captured Cosima? Yes, Mordak. He's gone from the face of the world now, vanished in a cloud of smoke. I don't mean to be a spreader of bad omens, but I've heard of worse stories where the villains never die, even when one's sure they did. He's gone, believe you me. Hard not to. What can you tell me about this island? There's not much to say about the good old Isle of the Crown that you may have not seen already. People here live a happy life. The king and queen of the isle are the real rulers of all the islands, even though some green islanders, especially the winged ones, tend to disagree. Rivalry of power. I've always considered it absurd. Real power lies in union. Like I said, 
There's nothing much I can say that you may not already know. But the deal is a deal, so let's hear your story. Not all the great stories about my kingdom involve me. The most recent, I recall, had me trapped. Are you talking about the incident with the Mask of Eternity? Oh! I know your son was deeply disturbed during the events, but I never got to know exactly what happened. A corrupted man, Lacredo, sought to stop the flow of the world we know. Who knows with what intentions? By destroying a sacred artifact known as the Mask of Eternity, he turned everything near it into stone. The magic was so strong that had this villager of Daventry not stopped it, it would have spread even further. Did you know this man? Not before Connor? The Quiet young man, yep. very brave. Connor by name. He defended his country with honor, defeated Lacredo, and restored the mask. He earned well his new title of captain of the Royal Guard. Did he not come to the wedding? He stayed back at home to defend the castle. You must trust him deeply. I do, good man. I do. Yeah, a, a real reason a lot of people didn't like Mask of Eternity... The biggest issue was that it was more of an action-adventure game and not the point-and-click RPG. So it would almost be like getting a Zelda game and it being a first-person shooter. You're like, wait, what? What am I doing? <laughs> it, I, at least that was what it was for me. Plus, it was riddled with a lot of bugs and issues like that. But Can you tell me of the Isle of Mist? And it didn't really just fit in the story that myself. well, at least in my I opinion. I see why everyone knows so little about it. The druids are not very friendly to strangers. They believe we will destroy their forest. I do not blame them. That is, in part, what we've done with the rest of the islands. I'm a believer of the concept of nature and civilization being able to coexist myself. Try telling them that. Anyway, no. I unfortunately don't know much about their isle. I've heard stories of a fantastic natural temple in the heart of the isle. But at this point, you probably know more about that mysterious place than I do. Rosella would love to explore that island. The perils of Rosella. Girl, did you know? I haven't had the honor to meet the princess yet, but Kings I don't doubt her words. Years ago, and mere minutes after Alexander returned home, I fell ill, and my heart nearly gave out entirely. It was Rosella who endeavored to travel into the fairy lands of Tamir to find a magical fruit that restored my health. Did she tell you much about Tamir? I've always wanted to visit. Maybe you can ask her personally when she recovers. What I do know is that she battled this evil witch called Lelote. It was there where she met her true love, Edgar, who was kept under a spell by a witch that turned him into a scared ghoul. Did she come across many interesting items during her journey? As I said, I don't know details, but I do know she found some strange artifacts she called the uh, Pandora's yeah. Box. Pandora's Box? That's strange. Very strange indeed. What is? Not long ago, a man dressed in a cloak. And now that I think about it, it was very similar to that of the stranger at the wedding. He came asking me about such an artifact. Are you certain? I'm very sure of it. That was uh, locked away, actually. Um, one of the things you did in the game, you could, is you put Pandora's box in a tomb, and then the skeleton key that you used to open that tomb you kicked it under the door so that it could never be retrieved, in theory, again. We'll uh, listen to the last story and then we'll go to the, the man. What do you know about the Isle of the Sacred Mountain? And the last one has to be... Of great things and great King's Quest 3 to Air is Human. The winged ones believe themselves to be supreme creatures. I can't blame them. I've heard their stories. This idea of supremacy has been carried through generations. Mm. Have you known them personally? They are not as unreachable as they used to be, though some may disagree. What do you mean by this? It is true they open their doors by removing the cliffs of logic. However, their land lies among places only reachable by the power of flight. How in the world could a human reach these lands? Good point. I could bet all the money I don't have that they are perfectly aware of this. And knowing how they can be, I wouldn't wonder that they find amusement in this fact. Shouldn't we give them the benefit of the doubt? When we are speaking about the winged people, there's no place for doubt. <laughs> doubt? <laughs> that reminds me of how I became a king. Oh, King's Quest I was 1. such a young and inexperienced chap then. Three artifacts. All ears. Ah, one fine day, I was called by our former king, my dear Edward. May his soul rest in peace. So you are not a royal origins? 
No, but Edward didn't have any children, so I was tested. He told me it was for the good of his people and his kingdom, but he knew better than I at the moment that it was a trial. So I did as he told me and retrieved three magic treasures that we still have in possession. What are these goodies? Treasures. The magic shield with the power to ensure victory to whomever wields it. The magic chest of infinite, never-ending gold. And the magic mirror with the power of seeing into those places we cannot see. Ah, they sound like a precious collection of items. They're much more than that. King Edward made mistakes during his life and lost them. The kingdom prospered again only when they were returned. I'm sure you're not a man that believes in good luck. Three treasures can't make a kingdom prosper of their own. And nor can one man on his own. Luckily, I've had the help of individuals who strongly believe in our kingdom. Alright, let's get the strange man. Did this man mention why he wanted the artifact? No, he was very rude. And he demanded information. He never said what for. Have you seen him again? As a matter of fact, I turned away and when I turned back, same man. I'm almost sure of it now. I wish I knew more to help you, your majesty. I think you've helped enough. The Pandora's box. Hmm. It has it's been funny. a nice chat, but I had better return to my children. Feel free to stop by and trade stories anytime. I know we didn't accomplish a lot in that, but that was a great recap for a lot of people who may not know King's Quest. Could this be a crystal... It's the only thing I can think of is He would not be interested. He would not he would not How do you know? That? The P? He would not Where the hell the sign reads will trade for a crystal tear? The frig am I gonna find a crystal tear from? Necklace? He would not Give me this. You can't just you Huh. Do I have a... I can't think of anything as a crystal tear. I would have thought this, maybe. That won't work, but keep trying. What if I do it the other way around? If it makes you feel any better, I would have tried that too. Graham considers it. Die! Damn. Well, I guess it's a good place to cut off anyway. See, my uh, time is running a little bit low. As always, thank you very much for watching, and please tune in to the next episode of King's Quest The Silver Lining. Thanks for watching, folks. It is much appreciated.